Hi! For this video we're going to look at finding the volume of a region using an iterated double integral. So that just means double integral one inside the other with all of the limits of integration set up ready to evaluate and then we're going to go ahead and evaluate the integral. Okay so uh, we want to find the volume of a region in the first octant, that's important to pay attention to, bounded by the coordinate planes and this plane that we're given here. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a picture of our region that we are integrating. So our plane here intersects the z-axis at 12. When I plug in 0 for x and y, I get z equals 12. Intersects the y-axis at 3. That's what I get when I plug in 0 for x and z. And intersects the x-axis at 6. So there is our plane in the first octant. The other sides of our region here would be formed by the xy plane on the bottom, the xz plane on the left side, and the yz plane on the back side. All right, and so we want to set up this double integral. So this plane is going to be our function f of x and y that we're going to integrate, and that's going to give us height, and then the base, the region down in the xy plane, is going to be our region r, that we're going to integrate over. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw that region R in the xy plane. Most students have a little bit of a hard time at first getting their limits of integration set up correctly when they look at these 3D pictures if they don't redraw it just so that they're in the directions you're used to seeing the x and y axes. Okay, so we want to set up this iterated double integral. Our function that we're going to integrate is z equals 12 minus 2x minus 4y. That function's continuous everywhere, and our equations for the boundaries of our region are all going to be straight lines, and all of those are going to be continuous also. So Fubini's theorem tells us we can set this integral up in either order, with dx on the inner integral or dy. I'm going to set it up both ways and then choose which way we want to integrate. All right, so if I set this up first with dx on the inner integral, think about going through our region in the direction of increasing x. So I'm looking over here in the region r in the xy plane. Going through that region in the direction of increasing x, I'm entering at x equals 0 and I'm leaving through the equation of that line. So there are a couple ways to get the equation of that line. One is you can just look at your graph in the xy plane and you know how to write the equation of a line. The other is to use the equation of our surface. So that line, if you go back and look at our three-dimensional picture here, that line is where that plane intersects the xy plane. So if I go back to the equation of the surface and put in z equals 0, I get 2x plus 4y equals 12. And that's the equation of that line. I could go ahead and divide through by 2. I think I'll go ahead and do that. So I have x plus 2y equals 6 would be the equation of that line. So when I go through that thing in the direction of increasing x, I'll enter at x equals 0, and then I'll leave at x equals 6 minus 2y. I have to solve that for x. And then I need to set up my y limits of integration. So looking at my picture here, y goes from 0 to 3. All right, and then I can also set this up with dy on the inner integral. So I want to think about going through the region in the direction of increasing y. When I go through that region in the direction of increasing y, I enter through y equals 0, and I leave through the equation of that line. So I'll need that solve for y. And then my x will go from x equals 0. Just looking at my graph here in the two-dimensional graph, x will go from 0 to 6. All right, so either of these should give the same answer when you evaluate it. I'm going to choose to evaluate the first one just because I don't end up with fractions in my coefficients for my boundary equations on that one. So that one to me seems a little bit easier. All right, so to integrate that one, I'm going to first integrate my function with respect to x. Remember, we should write down these outer limits of integration, even though you haven't done anything with them yet. Okay, now I'm going to plug in my limits of integration for x, and I need to do my second integration. So I'm going to choose to simplify this polynomial with respect to y. I'm going to distribute through and combine like terms before I do the integration. All right, so from here, it's a pretty straightforward integration. Just integrate with respect to y and plug in your limits of integration. All right, so I got 36 for my answer here, so that would represent the volume of that region. You might notice that you don't actually need an integral to find the volume of this region. If you remember a formula from geometry, this shape that we're finding the volume of is really a pyramid, and the formula for the volume of any pyramid or cone is one-third times the area of the base times the height. 
And so we can just use that actually to find the volume and check our answer. The area of the base would be the area of the triangle down in the xy plane. So 1 half times 6 times 3. And then the height of our pyramid is 12. So if I simplify that all, I get 36, which checks with what we got from our integration here. All right, try some volume problems.